Today we're going to take a look at ram carburetors. I have a short ram and a long ram in front of us. The one on the left here is the 2903, the long ram FNG carburetor. The one on the right is your J Ram K carburetor, the 3505. As far as dimensions, the footprint is identical. You could put a short ram carb on a long ram manifold and vice versa. I don't know why you would, but you physically could do it. The principal difference visually between the two is your J Ram K carburetor, your short ram, will not have any provision for a choke because they were manual. Other than that, they're, they're not that different. And as far as disassembly and rework, but they're, for practical purposes, they're identical. So we're going to take one of these and start the disassembly. See what tricks there might be. Hi-ho! So let's get to work here on this uh, long ram carb. The... It's not uncommon to find that this, these things are frozen. Uh, this one, you've got uh, good action on the primaries, but the secondaries are frozen. So we'll, we'll see what magic we might be able to do to, to free those up. But our primary interest right now is just to disassembly and seeing what parts go where. Off we go. The top part of this is called the air horn. It's held on by, uh, I think there's like 10 screws. The screws are not all the same length, so you want to pay attention to what hole they come out of. So for reassembly, you don't end up with long screws and short holes. There's also the choke clips that have to come off, these little needle pins. Yeah, but otherwise, really, it's straightforward. I've got the screws undone, ready to take off the top. I've disconnected this rod, which goes to the choke plate. And if you'll notice, it connects here, but it will fall through. So make a note, take a picture of how this goes on. I see them put on backwards. You know, things don't work right when they're on backwards. See, that does fall through. And there's the air horn screws. This one comes out by the front. This long one is the one in the back. But you can see the other ones are all the same size. So those are the two that you don't want to mess up. So looking at the bowl, you've got your primaries. That is your accelerator pump nozzle. There's your secondaries and 
This is what you call a velocity valve. It's counterweighted and it won't let your secondaries come on until there's sufficient airflow in order to make secondaries work. If you were missing this valve and you punched it, your car would bog because you'd be getting too much air. And air horn looks in reasonable shape. The pump cup's really not in bad shape. Do yourself a favor and take your air horn screws and put them in a pill bottle or somewhere so that you don't mix them up with your Venturi screws because the Venturi screws are the, the same thread but a different length so those you want to keep separate. And do yourself a favor and get yourself something where you can segregate your parts right and left. Of course, there really is no right and left. What you've got is a throttle side and a choke side. So label one choke, put those parts there. Label one side throttle, put those parts there. So the velocity plate just lifts up and out. You can see there's been some corrosion on this one and some gruesomeness down here, which explains why the secondaries are seized. One of the other things to make note of these are the fuel baffles. You can put them in wrong orientation. In other words, take this out and flip it 180. Well, make a note, that is the correct. If you don't get them, you can get binding of the floats. I let this sit overnight with Croil in the secondaries. And as you can see, well, you can't see. <laughs> We've got some motion, so we'll just keep soaking and working it back and forth, and we'll get the secondaries freed up. The secondaries work off of this system here where there's a spring inside of the primary shaft that will pull open the secondary. These uh, anvil looking things, that's for closing. When the primary comes back up through, this will kick the secondary closed. If, if you have trouble getting your secondaries unstuck, or your primaries for that matter, you can play heat on these areas to see if you can get the shafts free. Not a lot of heat, you're talking about aluminum which melts easy. We didn't mention it before, you can't mess up the reassembly of the secondaries or the primaries, venturis, because they have a recess, see right above my finger, which will meet 
here. So if, if you put your secondaries back in and you cannot get them to sit flat, it's because you've got the wrong one on the wrong side. That little cutout right there. Working on these things is a lot like working on a watch. If you really force something, you're probably going to regret it. So, yeah, this a very light, uh, small, dead blow hammer, and I'm not whacking on anything heavy. So. This, by the way, is the lockout for cold weather operation. When the choke is still on, this will prevent your secondaries from opening. But once the choke gets up to temperature, this falls away and now your pivot is released. If I get my fingers out of the way, that's what she's supposed to do. That's wide open, and you can see how this primary will kick the throttle. The secondary is closed should they need to. So the carburetor is pretty close to getting ready to go into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner for cleaning. One thing we're going to do now is disassemble the step-up rods, fuel enrichment rods. That's those delicate little things here. You want to be careful, and generally, I will take these out before I take the air horn off, just so that I don't have them exposed. So we'll take these off and take a look at their condition. When you remove that top cover, you get a spring and a A rod. You'll, you want to check these to see if somebody has bent them. They can be straightened, but this is a precision piece and you want to be careful. And you probably can't tell, but the, this one has a number on it 16 119. It's right there. These are different and they differ in the size of the step downs. You can interchange these right to left. They don't care. The other thing to look to, for on these is how much wear do they have up here? Because they're soft and after all these years and thousands of cycles these can wear thin. This one's just dirty, so it's in good shape. Uh, 
as most people know, when inspecting the floats, you want to be sure that they're sitting nice and square so that they are parallel to the bowls that they're going to sit in. You, you don't want these things contacting the sides of the carburetor base, uh, which would limit uh, their free travel. And of course, you, you check the float here, and you check the floats for drop. It's all in the manual. These are nice and straight. Uh, there's a lot about this carburetor that's good news. Things about the primary Venturi that are important to look at. This is actually a jet. It actually has a small hole in the end of it. And you want to be careful if this is plugged. Uh, and you take, say, a super small drill. You don't want to be enlarging this. On, on the main feed here, there are little holes in the side, other holes that are important. There's a vent tube that runs all the way up to the top of the air horn. These do get plugged. So uh, if you hold it up to the light, you should be able to see right through it from the bottom. And there's other bleed holes which again you can see from the bottom and you'll just want to do a visual to make sure you can see through them hit them with carb cleaner the gaskets for the primaries are these odd looking things they are different than the gaskets for the secondaries which are this looking thing. The secondaries also have got vent holes in them. Let's see. And uh, you'll do a visual on those to make sure that when you hold them up to the light, you can see daylight. A trip in the ultrasonic cleaner does wonderful things for this. Way down in the base here, which, yeah, I don't know if you can see him when this light Okay, those are the jets. I very seldom ever remove them. They don't really want to come out anyway. I'll just make sure that uh, they are, the passages are free and clear. This, this jet connects to this primary Venturi well. That jet will connect to that secondary Venturi well. And you've got two more on the other side. And of course that's your accelerator pump discharge. And your accelerator pump well with its check valve Uh, which is something to check and they're almost always good, but just put the plunger in there and see if you get backflow Our 
A few words on reassembly of the carburetor. You want to be sure that your step up fuel enrichment rods are not installed because they're so easy to bend. Plus, you're going to be trying to get these vent tubes up into their receiving holes, the accelerator pump into its receiving, and there are baffles here that have to go in front of the baffles there. If you have to force something, you probably don't have it correctly lined up. Okay. And now I've got the vents coming through on both sides. Now it's time to reinstall the enrichment rods. They may require some jiggling in order to get them in, but just a little fussing, a little wiggling, and they will drop in, and then you put your covers on. Again, you got to force something, you're doing it wrong.